Okay, so for this module, we're going to build on um, the conditional execution that we looked at at module 11 um, and integrate um, the idea of multi-way branching. Um, this is in section 3.4 and 3.5 in the textbook. Um, and just to, to kind of get a, um, a grounding in this, we, we've already looked at some programs, um, including the, the, the last one in module 12, that was dealing with uh, 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 right or wrong answers, right? So the user was being asked to enter in the sum of two numbers and we were branching and saying, if it's a correct answer, we're printing out the correct the, the, uh, congratulations. And if it's the wrong answer, we go ahead and we, we tell the user what the right answer was. So it was a branch. Um, and if we look over into the code, um, we basically had two sets of independent if statements. Um, the user, we generated two random numbers. We read the numbers in from the user. If the user was correct, we printed correct. If the answer was incorrect, we printed some other message. Um, so it, it was obvious maybe when we were writing this, um, it, we, were ans we were writing some redundant information. Um, we've got two if statements that are completely mutually exclusive. And it's really such a common paradigm or such a common problem um, that we've got a, a dedicated set of statements for that. So if we look at the, the else condition attached to an if statement, that allows us to save in the redundant check of this as does the input not equal co the correct answer. It basically allows us to say, say, if some condition is true, do something, otherwise do something else without restating the opposite of the condition. Um, so certainly this, can, this, this cuts down on just a little bit of code, and, and every bit counts. Um, we can certainly go in here and just change this to be else. And we'd have the exact same functionality to the program, um, but now um, just a little bit more clean. Now syntactically, it's important to remember you can't start off a conversation with else. right? So an else clause can only follow an if. You cannot start it. With an else, you can't go something like this, just like you wouldn't approach somebody and start a conversation by saying otherwise. Um, there really needs to be a follow-up to a previous question, and the question is the if statement. So we're not list we're not actually limited to a completely binary um, set of choices where it's an if condition followed by an otherwise. We can take these these if statements and combine them um, to form else if statements. Um, and this can allow us to chain together multiple conditions in a row. Um, so let's take a look at um, a little bit of an example of how to chain, chain together these else conditions. So programming example 13 um, has us looking at uh, the user entering in a grade between 0 and 1 and then picking from a, variety, from, from a number of different categories um, which letter grade they're going to get. Um, so we're not going to worry about um, you know, B pluses and B minuses. Um, we'll check to see whether the grade is greater than 90. And if it is, that's an A. Um, if it's between 90 and 80, um, that'll be a B. Between, uh, or between 89 and 80 will be a B. Um, between 79 and 70 will be a C. 69 and 60 will be a D. And anything less than a 60 will be an F. Um, so certainly th this, can, this can be represented as in a set of if and else if statements that um, systematically checks those thresholds. Um, and only one, of course, only one of those options, um, one letter grade should be assigned to a given number value that the user types in as their grade. And let's just start by writing the if clause for an A. We'll say grade is greater than a 90. Your grade is A. And we'll go ahead and run that. Just make sure our if statements work correctly. And it looks like I needed a greater than or equal to 90. 90 should be an A. Okay. 95. 
If I check out an 86, I won't get anything. Okay. So before I use an, an else statement, if I just write a separate if statement here, Notice that each if statement is mutually is is not mutually exclusive. They're independent of each other. So both of these if statements they stand alone. I could check them in any order, um, just as we've done before. Now in the past, most of the the branches that we've outlined have actually been mutually exclusive. It said something like, you know, if your answer is right, we congratulate you. If your answer is wrong, we tell you what's right what's wrong about it. In this condition, notice that it's not necessarily mutually exclusive. Um, so if I run this now and I get a, an 84, um, yes, my grade is a B. If I run that and my, my, my grade is a 78, I get nothing. If I run it and I get a 92, notice I see your grade is A and your grade is B. Um, and that's because these if statements are not independent, or they are independent of each other. So grade of 92 is going to pass this test, and grade of 92 is also going to pass this test, and I see both print out. That's what the else if clause is really all about. The else if clause will create a dependency between these. These if statements really go together. As soon as grade is greater than 90 and this executes, all the rest of the else ifs attached to that if statement are ignored. Similarly, if I've got grade is greater than or equal to 70, um, as soon as I pass the test on 80, like if the user types in 86, this will be skipped. Um, if the user types in 92, the rest of all the else if st statements will be skipped. So if I can do 60. And the last one, I could write that as, let's complete this for a second. Um, I could write this as gr else if grade is less than 60 for an F. However, it's kind of probably pretty wasteful. Um, we, of course, know if the grade is not greater than 90, if it's not greater than 80, if it's not greater than 70, and it's not greater than 60, well, then it's less than 60. And it's really not necessary to recheck whether it's less than 60 or not. Right? At any given time, if, if any of these tests pass, the rest will be skipped. So the else clause at the end is all that's necessary for the F. So if we run a 78, we get a C. If we get a 65, we've got a D. If we've got a 30, we've got an F. If we've got an 87, we've got a B. And if we get a 93, we get an A. Before moving on, I, I want to point out um, something that will, it's probably not all that critical for this program, but as we continue, um, as you start to build larger programs, um, a good rule of thumb is to always try to make your if statements do as little as possible. And they should limit themselves, the statements within the if clauses should limit themselves as best they can to only things that are unique to that if statement. Um, and in this case, really, these statements, they're a little contrived, but, but these statements are almost all similar. Um, your grade is A, your grade is B, your grade is C. The only thing that's changing is the actual letter itself. Um, so just kind of thinking, think, thinking this through, one thing I could do is move this C out statement above and then simply print out A instead and move, in fact, the ENDL out here. So I've got what prints before what's different first. Then I'm going to print out all the things that are different. Right? So I've got my C out, B, my C out, C, C out, D. And then what's the same again is everything ends in one line. If I run this, it, it appears exactly the same from the user's perspective, but I've done less, I've done a lot less inside each one of my if statements. Um, if I don't want to sort of be awkward about printing out the beginning of a prompt or the beginning of a statement in the end, what I could also do is use a variable. So I could do character letter 
and I could assign letter equal to A, letter equal to B, letter equal to C, to D, to F, and then at the very end, since I've set that variable, now I can do my grade, or your grade is letter E and L. Um, basically just capturing the data that's different so I can use it later in one print statement. This style or breaking those print statements up into pieces is probably a little preferable to repeating the sentence your grade is um, in each one of these clauses. Um, now if you're thinking carefully obviously we should probably say you know your grade was an A or a B um, using proper English grammar might might make some of these clauses a little bit different but for the for the sake of this example that that's what we went with okay so we'll get lots and lots of practice over the next few programming examples using if and else clauses um, let's just review a little bit of the syntax um, so on the right hand side here we see a typical set of if and else if clauses um, the important thing to remember is always, of course, that we start with an if statement. The if part is really the only thing that's not optional. Um, you're always going to start with the statement in an if clause, and then you are allowed to put zero or more else if statements chained together. Each one of these else if statements should be checking something different, and they're going to be checked in sequence. As soon as one of the if or else if statements it matches or it's, is true, all the rest are going to be disregarded and we're going to continue through the rest of the clause all the way to the end. At the end we may or may not have an else clause. Um, we don't always have to have an otherwise. We don't no, always need to have an else clause um, at the end of our else statement or our if statement. Um, but the order is important. We always start with if, we're followed by zero or more else ifs followed by an optional else clause. And I, I like to, to go over um, kind of common mistakes, common syntactical errors, common runtime errors um, whenever we look at new syntax. And, and on the, uh, these three on this slide are, are mistakes that sometimes are mistakes, sometimes aren't, but, but are commonly lead to some programming errors. Um, on the left hand side for this one. Um, what, I, what we should notice right off the bat is that there's actually a syntactical error here. Um, the if statement starts out and then has an else if clause attached to it. That's fine. And then finally an else clause. And this individual set of three clauses is a perfectly valid C++ um, statement. The problem is this elf, else if down here. This else if is not connected to the rest of this statement. Once we have an else, that statement, this group of three statements, is completely com is ended. All right? Syntactically, that marks the end of an if clause, the else statement. So this is equivalent to starting off just independently by saying otherwise if. Right? And that doesn't make any sense, and it won't work for C++. Um, whether the error was a, simply a forgotten else if here, or whether the error was that we shouldn't have the else, um, that, of course, depends on what the program is really doing. On the middle one over here, we have a similar problem. Um, first of all, we have an if and an else, and then followed by an else if, which is the same type of issue here. But actually, what the bigger problem, or the, the, the compiler error that will show up first, is an else clause followed by a test. Remember, these dot, dot, dots are really just placeholders for Boolean expressions. Um, so in this case, saying if some condition is true or some condition is false, else without an if followed by a Boolean expression is a syntax error. Right? So we have to, if we're going to have a Boolean expression, we don't have to, we can have an else statement. But if we're going to have a Boolean expression to test, it must be else if. The third one is probably the most um, common mistake that works its way into a program at runtime. Um, and that's because it's not, there's nothing syntactically wrong. And in fact, this might be a completely valid part of a program. Um, if you look carefully, this is not one complete or one joined set of if statements. We've got an if statement followed by an else if and another else if. And then it's closed. There's no more. 
Um, the very next thing that comes out after it is not an else if, which we chain together, or an else, which would also belong to this group of if statements, but it's a, it's a standalone if. And the beginning of that if statement marks the very end of this if else if clause. Right? And so in this case, what's, what's critical to see is that this if statement will be tested regardless if any of these were, were true. This if statement is independent of what's above it. Now again, I, I circled that in purple instead of red, and that I don't know whether, that, whether that's a syntax error. That may be a syntax error, it might not be. It depends on what the user or the programmer was trying to do. It very likely could be a logical error where somebody forgot to write an else if. So we've got lots of different combinations for the if and else that we'll, we'll have to get used to um, as we continue. Uh, on a final note for this module, um, indentation and variable scope are, are going to start to become very important. Um, we have, we, we've talked early on about grouping of code. Um, these braces or these curly brackets um, indicate a group of statements. They also indicate scope for variables. Um, whenever we declare variables inside if statements, they are only available, and we're going to talk a lot more depth of that with this in a little while, um, but they're only in, available to us within the braces that they declared in. Um, that's critical to remember. If I declare a variable in this if statement here, I will not be able to use it down here. I will not be able to use it down here. These, these braces actually indicate the scope of your variables. Um, also, as we start to nest if statements, which is very, very common, um, the indentation becomes much, much more important. Um, you, are, you should always learn and you should always be very strict with formatting of your code. Um, and you can notice the pattern, familiar, same pattern as with an if statement, just sort of recurring with an else statement. Every time we open up a scoping operator or a bracket, the code will be indented by one tab. Um, please make sure that you, you pay careful attention to this. This, this is a mark of someone who really kind of takes some care into their code um, well or poorly formed or poorly formatted code um, generally is much more difficult to work with and much more error prone.